Hi, everyone. This is Jake Lautensock. Um, I'm a TA for Dr. Savage's Chem 285 class here at BYU. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. In this video, we are going to talk about shape or molecular shape around atoms. Okay. I want you to watch the video I made prior to this one about MO diagrams, so orbitals, hybridization, and MO theory. Okay. It'll kind of really help you um, start kind of seeing how these orbitals interact and how it actually makes geometric shapes. Okay. Let's turn off my camera. And we will jump on the um, this note page here. Okay. So we're looking at shape. Okay. The two shapes that we are really concerned about in Chem 285, bioorganic chemistry, is one, tetrahedral, and the second shape is going to be trigonal planar, okay? We have a third, and that is a trigonal pyramidal or pyramidal, and we see it on paper here in this class, but uh, Dr. Savage today in class kind of wanted to stop talking about this one because in physiological conditions or in the molecules that we see in physiological conditions, it doesn't exist. We're just going to see tetrahedral and trigonal planar. So what are these? What are some key characteristics of each? Well, tetrahedral, and, and we'll look at what they look like here in a second, but tetrahedral, first, it must be sp3 hybridized. That's going to be like a dead initial giveaway that it, ha it it's most likely going to be tetrahedral. Another thing is it must be bonded to four things. And they cannot be lone pairs. It, 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 it's impossible. Um, it's impossible for lone pairs to be there. If I, if I say, um, I don't know why I, I bonded um, two, four things. Um, it's impossible to be bonded to four things if there's lone pairs. For example, let's look at Hey, so this carbon is sp3 hybridized. So I'm initially thinking tetrahedral and it's bonded to four things. That means that the shape of this is tetrahedral. Okay, let's look at another one here. What about this carbon here? Well, it's bonded, it's, it's let's look at the hybridization. Well, it's, there's one hybrid orbital to hydrogen there. Another one here to this hybrid hydrogen, one here to carbon, and another one here to carbon. It's sp3 hybridized. So that, that checks off the first thing on my list. And is it bonded to four things? Hydrogen one, hydrogen two, carbon three, carbon four. Four things. And none of them are lone pairs. That means that this has to be tetrahedral. Okay, now let's look at trigonal planar. Trigonal planar is going to be sp2 hybridized and bonded to three things. And um, this also cannot have lone pairs. And we'll look at that. Here's an example, illustrates not just trigonal planar, but a couple other ones. Let's look at this first carbon here. What is the shape around that? Well, I need to first identify the hybridization and it's bonded to four things. One, two, three, three hydrogens and fourth there to carbon. Um, that means it, and there's no residence, so that means it must be sp3 hybridized. And is it a bonded to four things? Well, one, two, three, and then the fourth there, the carbonyl. Four things. This guy right there must be tetrahedral. 
Well, what about this carbon right there? How many things is it bonded to? We need to like kind of be on the same page with what I mean by things. A double bond still counts as bonded to one thing. Okay. So if we um if we take a look at this carbon here and we ask, well, first off, what's its hybridization? Well, there's one bonding region, two bonding regions, and a third one there. And there's a double bond, so there's an unhybridized P orbital. I'm immediately saying that this is sp2 hybridized. So we check off the first thing on our list. Is it bonded to three things? Well, it's bonded to a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. That's three things. That means I must be trigonal planar. You might ask then, well, what's the shape of this guy or this one? So let's go through it. Well, there's one bonding region, two bonding regions, three bonding regions. That means that this is, and there's a double bond there, so that means it's sp2. We check that off the list. But is it bonded to three things? I bonded to one, well, there's no bond up here to anything and no bond here, and there's lone pairs. My answer is no shape. What about this hydrogen? Well, it's not even hybridized. It's just an S orbital. There's no shape as well. Last one, and then we'll end this video. This one would be a good one to pay attention to. This is going to um, add on to our conversation about sp2 versus sp3 hybridization. Let's just simplify this a bit. Let's let's bring it back to one more carbon, one less carbon. Okay, let's work from left to right. What about this first carbon here? Well, this first carbon is bonded to is bonded to three things. There's or or another or sorry, four things. One, two, three, four, also four bonding regions. My, so we're gonna go through all of our hybridizations and the shapes. It's sp3 hybridized and there's four things it's bonded to. One, two, three, four. So it must be tetrahedral. Well, this next one here. Well, there's four bonding regions. One, two, three, four. That must mean it is sp3. And it's also going to be tetrahedral because it's bonded to four things. One, two, three, four. Okay. You can kind of see that these are closely related. The reason why we're, we're working through it is because there's a few nuances when there's it, the sp3 doesn't mean it's tetrahedral. If it's tetrahedral, it means it's sp3. It's kind of one of those forward uh, correlations, but not always backwards, right? Um, Let's look at this guy here. So that, that is the carbonyl carbon. There is three bonding regions instead of four. That means that that carbon is sp2 hybridized. And the next question you need to ask is how many things is it bonded to? One, two, three things. I'm immediately sold that the, the, the answer is trigonal planar. What about this oxygen up here? Well, similar to the problem we just did, there is one, two, three. It is sp2 hybridized. Does that mean it's trigonal planar? No, because there's lone pairs there. It's not bonded to three individual things. It's bonded to a carbon and nothing else. So it's sp2 but there's no shape. Moving on. I don't know why I've switched to red. Let's move on to this nitrogen here. You are tempted to say that there are one, two, three, four bonding regions. Okay, but we need to put a pause in that and draw a fun residence arrow.
does this sway your opinion of that nitrogen being sp3 it does because now there are this nitrogen has a bonding region to carbon to hydrogen and to another carbon with no lone pair so there's three bonding regions making and making this sp2 hybridized so a key principle if resonance exists there, if resonance exists there, or allowing a double bond to, to, to be there during resonance, in the molecule that we haven't drawn resonances, we still have to do the, the resonance form hybridization. So it's sp2. And how many things is it bonded to? Well, it's bonded to one, two, three, carbon, carbon, Nitrogen, forget about the lone pair because we determined that it's not there during resonance. Trigonal planar. And then this guy here is easy. Hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Four things, four bonding regions. SP3 with a shape of, sorry. Um, tetrahedral. Cool. I hope this was helpful. I'll scroll out here so you can see kind of the whole page. But I, I hope this allows you to um, answer some of the, the shape questions on your homeworks and, and the quizzes and, and tests coming up.